Our guest is Elizabeth Nelson uh, from George Washington University, and uh, we want to talk about the effectiveness of uh, Russian propaganda. Recently, uh, many experts uh, recognized that uh, Russian propaganda, and uh, namely uh, Russia Today uh, channel and uh, other uh, Western-oriented uh, Russian media, uh, they are very effective. So how, how do you measure effectiveness of propaganda? So measuring effectiveness of propaganda is pretty difficult because we can only look at so much data that exists out there on that. So what we did was we actually gather data on what videos RT posts for different audiences every month. So in Arabic, in Russian, um, in Spanish, and then we looked at what kinds of videos these are, so what categories they fit into, and then what percent of their viewership per channel corresponds to those categories. So essentially we try to measure their effort by how many videos they post per month in a given category, and then we try to, mess we try to um, measure viewers' responses by how much viewers concentrate on those same categories. And with that, we're able to see what people view, so we're able to see what messages they choose to focus on, um, and whether or not those are the messages that RT wants portrayed. But we can't really ask all of those YouTube uh, watchers whether or not they believe the coverage and such. So that's the difficulty with trying to measure something like effectiveness of Russian propaganda. So what your data shows, how, uh, like in figures or uh, in uh, any measurement, how effective is uh, Russia Today's and uh, other Russian propagandist program in uh, media? Are? So it depends. Um, we can see from our data that um, despite what some people say, they really do make an effort to follow the news cycle. They don't just kind of relentlessly spew anti-Ukraine news constantly. They do make an effort to follow kind of what normal news outlets are saying, but they also do very clearly apply the Kremlin line when that um, does apply to whatever they're covering. Um, so they've had decent amounts of viewership in terms of comparing it to the number of videos they post in a lot of channels, including RT German, RT French, um, to a degree the main flagship English channel, um, but some other areas of their coverage are less watched. So their USA coverage doesn't do very well in the Russian language channel, and um, their human interest channel always their, their human interest segments always do very very well on pretty much all channels that they post them on, um, and their Middle East coverage is, for example, sometimes over sixty percent of their views on RT Arabic. So we can see where they concentrate their efforts on different channels and whether or not they get a corresponding viewership. And we see that they do have relatively successful viewership on Ukraine in some of their key areas that we would expect them to target, like RT German, RT French, um, and some English language channels. But we also see where they sometimes fail. So they don't even try to push their Ukraine message in RT Arabic. Um, we can see that very few videos are aimed at that, and it doesn't get much viewership. So that kind of helps us see that their strategy differs on RT Arabic from somewhere like RT German, and it fits with their foreign policy um, priorities. And then we can also see that those audiences also respond by not particularly valuing that coverage compared to domestic coverage in places like RT Arabic. Um, so we can differentiate the strategy across channels and say that it's more nuanced than perhaps people previously thought. Um, so that's been one of our biggest takeaways in looking at the data. That's very interesting because uh, recently uh, the Pew Institute uh, uh, made uh, this research and it was published in the New York Times that uh, more than half uh, of uh, uh, people who were surveyed in Germany and France uh, in several European countries, uh, they are very passive toward Ukraine and even toward the NATO allies. But uh, so uh, the Russian propaganda kind of winning minds uh, in uh, Europe. But uh, when we're talking about uh, Arabic, uh, and you said it's very tuned, uh, is one of the messages to in Arab to Arab countries that these terrorist organizations like ISIS, uh, they are sponsored or created by U.S. Uh, 
What's the content? At times, the RT Arabic channel does tend to talk about what role the U.S. has played in creating instability in the Middle East, and including Europe, they also cover that, um, or Europe creating instability in the Middle East. Um, so that's an angle they take often. They also criticize um, U.S. military interventions in the Middle East, as one might expect. They've criticized the Saudi interventions in Yemen, um, and they also tend to allow for more pro-Assad coverage in Syria. And they also seem to emphasize that Russia is an important strategic partner for different regimes in the Middle East. So they definitely, even though they're offering, offer, often covering local news, they um, take a distinct Russian policy perspective on the news that they do cover. So that's kind of an interesting angle of it that does fit in with um, them undermining Western values in that way. Is it mostly negative uh, approach, like uh, Ukraine is bad uh, in Europe, uh, US is bad uh, in uh, Middle East and Europe, or is it like positive, uh, uh, do, do they have this equally positive approach, like Russia is good, uh, Putin's uh, policy, and uh, the, do they uh, advocate for uh, some ideology? I think it's more of the negative sense. There's not often a very clear Russian ideological strain in things. It's more of a negation of other ideologies. But I think the most pro-Russia coverage I've seen has been in their coverage of the 70th World War II anniversary and such. So they've covered a lot of veterans' stories and uh, various battles the Soviet Union took part in and the role they played in liberating various areas. So that's been a way in which they've been able to naturally fit in pro-Russia coverage across channels in a way that hasn't seen seemed overtly propaganda-esque. It's more of a promotion of the positive role the Soviet Union played at the end of World War II. Um, so that's been a very, that's probably the most pro-Russia um, segment of videos I've seen. Most of the rest has been more either news coverage they couldn't avoid covering, such as like Solf. They cover that because they really, he had to stick to the news cycle to a degree, but they probably covered it a lot more favorably towards the government than Western outlets. Um, but overall it tends to be the negation of Western values rather than um, promoting any alternative ideology to replace it. And the last question, uh how effective, uh, in your own experience, Russian propaganda is? For example, did you learn something new? Uh, did you change your views on something after uh, doing research on uh, uh, Russia today? So I think I'm almost an example of the polarization hypothesis in some ways, because I have pre-existing knowledge of the backing of RT. So in that way, I'm not really the best person to look at in terms of is it effective. Um, I think it is good at covering some voices that don't get a voice often in American media. Um, so to that extent, sometimes it's very interesting to hear their point of view because you get a different segment of the population than when you watch something like CNN or BBC. And it's always useful to hear the other side to a degree. Um, but in terms of changing my views on Ukraine or anything, I, it's not an outlet I would trust on that front. Um, so I think it's kind of, you have to treat it a lot like you treat any news media. You need multiple sources. I would never advise anyone to watch only RT, but it can be useful in terms of learning to deal with a wide range of media viewpoints. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to know that uh, in some cases, like in yours, RT is uh, toothless. <laughs> Th thanks for participating. Thank you.